Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about heathers and heaths. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So stay tuned. Hi. All right. So let's talk about why I love heaths and heathers so much. But first of all, it'd probably be a good idea if I explain to you the differences between the two. And there actually aren't a whole lot of differences between these two plants except for the shape of their leaves. They both pretty much take the same type of conditions. Um, when they are considered like an alpine plant. So they can grow in the highlands of Scotland is where they came from as well as Ireland. And our weather here in the Northwest is very similar to the weather in Scotland and Ireland. But that's how they ended up here in the Americas. So right off the bat the main reason I love them so is they are tough plants. I can plant them just about anywhere here in the yard as long as they're getting at least five hours of sun so that they can bloom and they usually take wherever it is I put them. Now they do require an acidic soil very similar to like your rhododendrons, your azaleas, um, those types of plants, they'll take kind of the same conditions. However, they need to have really good drainage. They can't sit in water. They hate wet feet. Uh, but that also means that they can hold up pretty well in the heat. They do quite well, as long as you can keep the soil moist and don't let them dry out completely. That's kind of their worst enemy, is if you let them get too dry. But I will show you the pictures there in front of you, the differences in the leaves. So with a heather, which is what this one is, is part of the Coluna family. You have Coluna for heathers, and the heaths are a part of the Erica family. The two of them are kind of like cousins, and they belong in the Ericaceae family. So let me start with the heathers first. The word heather usually gets misconstrued between the two plants, but there are proper plants that belong in their particular families. So the best way to go by it is go by the Coluna family, which is what the heather is a part of. And the best way for me to remember the differences between a heather and a heath is the heather's leaves look very much like a feather, like what you're going to see there in the photo. Whereas a heath has teeth, or basically like little pine needles. And that's the best way for me to tell you the difference. That's how I can best explain the difference between the two. But what I really like about them is that most of them are a very low growing plant. I love putting them in the fronts of borders or creating just an absolute drift of them, as you'll see in several of the pictures that I'm showing you. But heathers and heaths are fantastic just because they are so tough. They're also evergreen, so they don't lose their leaves during the winter time. In fact, lots of them turn color depending on the temperature in the air. So you have several different varieties that will have a gold leaf during the spring and the summer and by the time the fall rolls around it actually turns a brilliant orange or a brilliant bronze color which just extends your season for them as you'll see in the pictures there. Also why I like them, like most of your heathers, like this particular variety is Coluna, uh, Renalte is the name of this one, and it's kind of a lavender flower, but they also come in a dark pink, they can come in white, they come in uh, hues of different types of oranges, and this happens to be a dark leaf on this one, but there are some that come with golden leaves as well, so they really stand out when they're out in the garden. But I love these, especially at this time of the year, because they start blooming now. Um, a lot of your Coluna varieties will start blooming in the late summer to early fall. And then, we are also starting to get in here at the nursery all of our heaths. The heaths have teeth, so these have more of a needly type foliage on them. But I don't know if you can tell in the picture there, this one has a lot of buds on it. And this particular variety, which is called Erica Darleydale, a very popular variety, it does exceptionally well here in our environment. They will start blooming in December and January, which is another really cool thing about these plants, is they will be blooming in the winter time. In fact, they're so tough, you will see pictures of them blooming in the snow. 
Um, that's how anxious they are <laughs> to start blooming. So these are fantastic for winter color if you need some blooms out there in the winter garden. Um, but I love planting these in drifts. You can mix them together, the heaths and the heathers. Uh, feel free to put them together if you want to out in the garden. Um, your heathers here have a tendency to get a little bit taller. They can get up to maybe 24 to 48 inches tall and a little bit wider where these will stay more of a mounding type plant and they'll get about 12 to 16 inches tall but they can get quite wide depending on the variety that you pick up so of course make sure to read your tags but most of these are hardy down to let's see on this one this the heaths are really hardy down to zone four or minus 30 degrees and i've seen a lot of the heaths up in mount rainier so a lot of these plants have taken to higher altitudes and as you know, if you're sitting on the side of a mountain, the winters can be pretty tough um, where they're sitting under snow for you know months at a time. But they don't seem to mind and they seem to like it. So the cool thing also about these two types of plants is you don't need a whole lot of compost to put in with them and you only need to fertilize them like once a year. So they don't require a lot of maintenance, which is another fantastic thing. So if you're looking for something to add to a low maintenance garden or you want to create a low maintenance garden, heaths and heathers are perfect for that. Um, they don't require a lot of water once they're established. Just make sure they don't dry out completely. Uh, what else can I tell you about them? I just want to double check the zone on this one. This is the heather. Yep, same thing, down to minus 30 degrees. That's pretty darn hardy. And they're probably good up to zone 9. Uh, don't think they like the weather much warmer than that or a zone much warmer than that. But we um, have like the perfect conditions for them here where they're getting plenty of moisture during the winter time, gets a lot drier during the spring and the summer. So you can back off your watering when you go to plant these. You don't need a whole lot of water to keep them going. And they don't require exceptionally good soil either. Um, I mean, let's face it, they're growing on the side of the mountain in rocky, kind of crappy soil, usually on hillsides. And as long as they have really good drainage, they don't seem to mind. They seem to do very well. So check out your local nurseries for your heaths and your heathers. They're a fantastic plant for the front of the border or just creating a huge drift of them somewhere for color. I like to alternate them so I'm getting color in the winter. You can get color in the spring and the summer. And now you can start planting some for color in the fall. So yeah, make sure to check your local nurseries for these. They should, should be in abundance right now as we're all craving a little more color. Um, and I've used these in containers as well. I do eventually unpot them and put them out in the garden, but these are fantastic in a container. So don't be afraid to use them and mix them in with some of your other perennials and grasses and things like that for the fall. All right, you guys, so there's your blurb on heaths and heathers. Hopefully I've helped you to learn the differences between the two. They get mixed up all the time, uh, but they pretty much take the same conditions. Okay, any questions, anything at all, just ask down in the, the uh, description box down below, or you can send me an email to gardenstylenwest at gmail.com. Hope you're having a fabulous fall, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.